Well, good morning. If you're a guest here at Old Brazier's this morning, we'd like to welcome you. Rest of you, I'm sorry you have to put up with me again. When I was preparing uh, for this sermon, that song came to my mind, and I, I knew I just had to call Marlon and, and ask that he sing that, because you know, the anchor does hold. Jesus Christ is always there, he's solid as a rock. We go through the troubled seas of this life all the time, constantly. If you're coming out of them, we well, better hold on because you're about to go back in them. The troubled sea is all around us. And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning, is those troubled seas and the anchor that we have that can hold on, that can hold us. Hold firm. No matter what the situation is, no matter how dire, or no matter how bad you think it is, Jesus Christ can hold on. Go to Romans 5, 1 through 5 real quick. And it says, therefore, having been justified by faith, I have been de declared righteous. Through Jesus Christ, we can be declared righteous. Through our faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. And James says, count it all joy. Now that's hard to do, isn't it? When we find ourselves in these predicaments, in these bad situations, in these turbulent seas of this life, when we're getting thrown from one end of the world to the next, and we're supposed to enjoy that, right? Supposed to enjoy that. See the glory in it. Count it as joy. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. We got to endure, don't we? Push on. And perseverance, character, and character, hope. Hope. That, that's what the message is really going to be about today, is about hope. And the hope that we have in Jesus Christ and what that hope does for us. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So when you trust in Jesus Christ, when you rely on him in everything, you're not going to be disappointed. That's what the Bible tells me. And I believe what the Bible says is true. So I'm, I'm going to stand up here today and I'm going to tell you that if you will rely on Jesus Christ, you will not be disappointed, ever. He will always come through. He will always be firm. He will always stand strong in every moment and every situation of your lives. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a quick little story about, about Paul. And you can follow along if you want to over in Acts uh, 27. I'm going to back up just a little bit probably and be in chapter 26 for a few minutes but anyway Paul is in the temple and he's been teaching people about Jesus Christ he's been preaching and they come and they arrest him they arrest Paul for teaching about Jesus Christ he's pr trying to spread the hope to all people and they arrest him they come and take him away and he ends up before King Agrippa. And he, Paul is, you know, he has been living his life for the Lord. He has been spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere. Do you think that, you know, he would just have an easy, pleasant life ahead because he's doing the Lord's work, right? Well, no, he finds himself in jail. He, found, he finds himself in bondage of chains. And he goes before King Agrippa and what is, what is his defense? He says, hey, Jesus Christ is my defense. He tells about his conversion, how he met Jesus Christ on that road to Damascus. He tells him 
how much Jesus Christ wants to save him. And at the end of the day, King Agrippa, he stands up and he says, you know what, Paul, you almost had me. You almost convinced me. He says, but you, you're, you're appealing to Caesar. He says, you need to go see to Caesar. He says, go see Caesar. I, you know, I don't see anything here that you've done, but since you've appealed to him, you need to go to Rome and, and stand before Caesar. So he does. They... Uh, they turn him over to a they turn Paul over to a centurion named Julius. And they begin their journey to Rome. He's put on a ship with other prisoners, headed towards Italy, and they pull in this little port named Crete because the wind had had gotten strong against them. They were trying to sail into the wind, and it was just too tough. They, they said, hey, we need to take a break, and they pull off in this little port of Crete. They stay there for a couple of days, and, and the wind seems to shift in their direction, the way they want it to go. It, I, the captain says, hey, it's time to board the ship. We're, we're about to set sail. So Julius grabs Paul, some of these other prisoners, and Paul says, hey, if we set sail right now, it's going to lead to disaster. We don't, need, we don't need to do that. They say, hey, we ain't listening to you. You're, you're, a cr you're a crook. You're a criminal. We're going to set sail. He says, okay. Well, they get on the ship. And shortly after that, a storm kicks up. You know, in our part of the world, we'd call it a hurricane. They call it a northeaster or a typhoon or you call it whatever you want. But the seas become troubled. It gets rough. And the crew, fearing for their lives, they, they begin to throw their tackle overboard. They begin to throw their supplies overboard because they're fearing for their lives. They're trying to lighten the load to get rid of everything they can. It says they have not seen the stars or the sun in many days. So they have no clue where they're at, where they're going. The, the wind is just tossing them from one place to the next. And they're afraid. How many of us find ourselves in that situation out in the world? The, the world just throws us from one place to the next. And, and we're just, we're scared. We feel like we're all alone in trouble. We... We don't see any help in sight. You know, that's how they, they navigated the seas was with the sun and the stars. So they didn't feel like they had any help. They felt hopeless, right? In this dark storm, they were hopeless. They didn't have anything to guide them in the right direction. So we're going to pick up in Acts 27 and verse 21. It says, but after a long abstinence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of them and said, men, you should have listened to me. Paul's giving them a little, I told you so. And do not, ha and not have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. You know, how many times do we find ourselves out in the middle of a storm in this life and we had a friend on the other side that said, hey, this is not a good idea. This is not where you need to be heading. You need to stop and you need to think about this. But we, yet we, we just kind of sail right on into it anyway, don't we? we? We just throw caution to the wind and we say, you know what? I'm going. I think the time is right. Let's do this. That's kind of where they find their situation at right now. And Paul says, hey, you should have listened. You should have listened. Next verse. And now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. Next verse. For there stood by me this night an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. And when we find ourselves in the middle of the storm, you know, Paul probably didn't expect to be put in jail, to stand before King Agrippa, to be put on a boat headed to Rome, and this big storm blow up. You know, it's kind of caught him, you know, I think he's, he's just along for the ride, right? Because he's a prisoner. 
But I don't think he expected to find himself in this bad of a situation. And God sends an angel to tell him that, hey, your life is going to be spared and so is the life of those who are with you. Now I want you to look at that and think about God's word in our life. A word from God in the middle of a storm will bring peace and encouragement to those who listen to him. When we find ourselves in the middle of the storm and we haven't seen the suns and the stars for many days, we haven't found any way out, we don't know where we're headed or where we're going, if we will stop and we will listen for God's word, it'll bring peace and encouragement in the middle of the storm. I think these sailors at that moment are are probably saying, hey, I think Paul's probably on the right track. Let's, let's listen to him for a minute. He done told us that we didn't need to sail off into this storm, but we did anyway. And now he's telling us that everything's going to be okay because the God that he serves sent him a message. You know, that's, that's proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ right there, isn't it? That's all. Paul is is spreading the gospel right then and right there. He says, hey, the God that I serve sent me a message, and this is the message. You can be saved. That's what he's telling them. You're going to be saved. Only the ship is going to be torn up. That's the only thing that's going to be lost. Your life will be granted to you. Acts 27, verse 25. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. I find peace and comfort in that. When I hear God's word in the middle of heartache and pain and struggle in this life, I find comfort in knowing that it's going to happen exactly the way he said it would happen. I don't have to wonder. I don't have to doubt. I don't have to fear because my God said that I would be saved and I can hold on to that. And that salvation will come just exactly as he said it would come. Next verse. However, we must run aground on a certain island. When God speaks, we can be confident in it. Confident that it will happen. He's always faithful to his word. God cannot lie. He will not lie. He cannot lie. He is faithful to his word. If he says it, it's going to happen. If he said those men are going to live, then they're going to live. If he says the ship is going to be torn up, the ship's going to be torn up. What he says goes. And what he says happens. What is he speaking into your life this morning? What's he telling you this morning? Are you te- is he telling you that you need a Savior? If, if so, his name is Jesus Christ. Is he telling you to dig deeper in his word and study a little harder, find out more about him? I promise you the answers are here. Is he telling you to stand on the promises of God through a relationship with Jesus Christ? You know, we learned last week, we heard last week, Keith say that the promises are no good without the promiser, right? His promises are no good if you don't have a relationship with him. It starts with a relationship with Jesus Christ. In verse 27. Therefore take heart, men, for I believe. 27. There we go. Now when the 14th night had come. So they've been in the middle of this storm for 14 days and 14 nights. I mean, it's just raging all around them. You know, when I was reading this, I kind of pictured some circumstances that I had been in in my life that seemed to just last forever. They just, there was no end to them. Can you imagine being out in the middle of that sea for 14 days and 14 nights, not seeing the sun or the stars, not being able to know where you're at, just being thrown around by the winds and the waves? I would imagine they're at their wits' end. They don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. It says that night had come. 
We were driven up and down in the Adriatic Sea about midnight. The sealers sensed that they were drawing near some land. Next verse. And they took soundings and found it to be 20 fathoms. And when they had gone a little farther, they took soundings again and found it to be about 15 fathoms. Then fearing lest we should run aground on the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for day to come. Now that's the verse I want us to focus on right there. They, fearing lest we should run aground on the rocks, they dropped the anchor. That's what we need to do. When we find ourselves in that situation, being tossed and turned by the waves, by the wind, by this world, by our situations, by our jobs, by our family, by our relationships, by our finances, no matter what the, no matter what the storm is. And it can be a number of things. We need to drop the anchor. Because I promise you, if you don't drop the anchor, you will end up on the rocks. The rocks are all around us. The devil, he places them in, in certain places. He wants us to trip, stumble, fall. He wants, he wants nothing good for us, right? But they dropped the anchor and prayed for day to come. If you're in the middle of a bad marriage, if you're in the middle of bad finances, if you're in the middle of a horrible job, if you're in the middle of losing your job, if you're in the middle of having no money, if you're in the middle of, of struggling with a child, drop the anchor and pray for daylight to come. Drop the anchor and wait and pray for daylight to come. I believe by this time these men are thinking, hey, Paul knows what he's talking about. We need to start praying for that daylight to come. Hey, when we belong to Jesus Christ, there's daylight coming. There's daylight coming. It's at the end of the tunnel. I can see it ever drawing so closer to me. I just got to pray and wait for his salvation to come. But it's coming. And I know it's coming because his word says it's coming. And I can trust in his word. I have hope. Could you imagine that ship ride for Paul if he had had no hope? You know, later on it goes to tell that, hey, they were just going to kill them because they were about to run aground. You know, hey, they're going to kill Paul and all these other prisoners because they didn't want them to escape. And that centurion said, hey, no, I believe Paul. I believe that we're going to be safe. Don't kill them. If you kill him, we might die too. And they're headed for this little island named Malta. Now, if you look up the meaning of Malta, you can find all kinds of different things. But one of the meanings is refuge. When God brings us through the storm, when we hold on to that anchor and we come out the other side, there's a refuge. He is there. He's waiting on us. But you know, I believe Paul was brought through this turbulent sea for nothing else than to glorify God. You know, he ended up on that little island called Malta, that refuge. And what did he do? He started to glorify God. He spread the gospel on this little island. You know, it kind of got me to thinking, you know, well, when God brings me through times in my life, what should I do? I should glorify God, right? I should tell of the experience that... I have had with my Savior. I should spread his word. I should tell all that would listen to me what God has just brought me through and what his word says. That I have hope. Hebrews chapter 6. Grace, if you want to come on up. This hope we have I mean, it's really, it's really simple to share the gospel with somebody. Start with this right here. I have a hope that is an anchor for my soul. What is that anchor? 
That anchor is Jesus Christ. What is that hope? That he has forgiven me of my sins. That I have been reconciled to God through the, the blood that he shed on the cross. And that he rose on the third day. And ascended into heaven to be at the right hand of the Father. Where he intercedes for me. I can't think of any better hope. I can't think of any better anchor for my soul. It is both sure and steadfast. It's firm and secure. It's strong. It never fails. It's always there. Enters the presence behind the veil. That's him sitting by the Father, by the right hand of the Father. He has gone to where I could not go. To be a mediator. To tell God that I belong to him. Covered in his blood. Yet when the accuser comes, when Satan comes and says, God, Josh Garmony is a failure. He has sin in his life. Jesus Christ says, he's covered by my blood. He's forgiven. That's my hope. That's all that I have to get me through this life is that hope, knowing that my salvation is here, but yet not complete, but will be completed on that, on that day, on that morning when the, when the sun comes from that eastern sky with a shout, with the trumpets blow, I know he's coming. I know how to get through this world. I trust in him and his word. You know, that anchor, Jesus, he sits in heaven. I'm here on earth, but yet he lives in me. That's how the anchor holds, right? If I wasn't connected to the anchor, it would do no good. I wouldn't have any hope. It would just be like a rope dangling down from heaven that I couldn't quite reach. I could see it, but couldn't hold on to it. He says, here it is, hold on to it. He puts it in my heart. And he says, you can have it. You can hold on to it. You can be safe. You can be secure through all of this life. If you'll just hold on to me. As y'all stand... I want you to think about your life. I want you to think about the situation that you're in right now. Is it a tough situation? Is it a hard situation? Is it something that you need an anchor for? I would dare to say that most of the situations in our life, we need an anchor. We need to be held on to. He says, you can have that anchor. You can, you can know without a shadow of a doubt that what he tells you is true and that it will come to pass. Do you need hope? Do you need hope in your life today? You know, I hadn't found too many situations in my life, at least here lately, that I don't need hope. I need hope all the time. I need to know that my Savior is there. I need to know that what my God said is true. Maybe you're grounded. Maybe you are, you're, you're held firm by that anchor. He says, pray. And wait for daylight to come. 